I think it's time for the next talk. Don't get confused by this German slide. It's in English, so stay in here, come, come to the front. And before joining over to Andy, who will talk about uh, the surveillance industry and about a bug tracker about it, maybe. Um, I will please you to take your trash with you if you leave the room. So, and now, please welcome Andy. Right, to, to explain in English this confusion here, this is the latter head of uh, the papers that were coming from the raid of the Egyptian Ministry of State Security. Um, all these letterheads have this, in the name of Allah the Almighty. Then it continues with investigations, the state security branch of information technology group electronic surveillance department for hacking. Originally, I wanted to have this thing, this, uh, to have people singing it, you know, in the name of Allah the Almighty, department for hacking. But um, um, the Egyptian people I talked to said it's blasphemy, so, okay. Um, I uh, want to introduce Bug Planet. Um, I think this slide needs to be switched off to probably view the slides from the Beamer. Light technology, hello? All right. Um, basic principles. What I'm going to talk about is the surveillance industry, governments, and the countries of this planet, the country. All right. Um, that's what happens if you write your floats too late. Um, the surveillance industry is um, quite an industry like others. They invest into products and to development. They market this. Uh, they market, of course, first to those customers which are most easy to approach. Um, of course, with this type of technology, surveillance, um, listening to phone calls, bugging people's computers and so on, this is a very machiavellistic way of marketing. It's like, oh, may we help you to suppress your citizens a little bit more efficient way. Um, governments, uh, on the other hand side, are often ruled by control freaks just by nature because they are working for administration of a government and their job is in a way to keep the system in a controlled fashion. So while some of them do simulate democracy, the intelligence sector often due to its secrecy um, surroundings is very limited um, involved in the democratic process because these people are not working within a controlled framework. I mean, in theory, yes, in practice, there's lots of uh, gaps between what people know and what people don't know. Um, to ensure um, freedom of communication, thinking and acting for citizens and so on, um, I think it's very important to limit this industry um, and to get a little bit more aware of what's happening, even if I have one more typo in here. Um, actually, the point is that some of these technologies I'm going to talk about are market to countries which are not very democratic. Still, they are marked under names like lawful interception, which is very true. In some countries, lawful interception means there is a, a basic human rights principle, there is a court, uh, there's like a constitutional chapter on secrecy, on privacy. And in other countries, the law is a single person. And if that single person says, I don't trust anybody here, I want to like, have everybody's phone calls on record, that too is lawful interception. Um, it's just a different law. Um, the basic concept of Bug Planet is just a public wiki for the collection of information on this like industry, on the communication surveillance technology, on the companies, uh, including all the information um, that we managed to get about ownership of these companies, uh, turnarounds of their financial figures, the persons involved in this, where I don't have really an answer, but I do have the question how much privacy deserve people who make it themselves as a living business concept um, to uh, invade the privacy of whole nations of thousands of millions of people. 
Um, the products and services offered by these um, companies and run by the countries. So we will also look at specific countries. And the wiki has a page for each country where I'm trying to nail down which vendors appeared with what technology and so on. Also, the global installations for signal intelligence, communication intelligence, so that's the boys game, the, the old boys name, game of the National Security Agency and so on. So those collecting communication intelligence data um, for a long time and do it globally. Um, if we talk about surveillance technology, it is very important to distinguish between the tactical level um, and tactical instruments and the strategic level. Tactical means um, that these tools are to be used ad hoc. It's like uh, what we call tactical interception instrument, for example, is what others call a buck, so a small thing that records what's spoken in a room. Or maybe you have tactical GSM interception, that is a machine that is just doing semi-passive, how they call it, interception. So there's no network involved, there's no structural backbone of maybe uh, legal processes and so on involved. It's just a tool that you can use to do something. While the strategic level is um, what is applied to a whole country as a concept. So if companies advertise strategic interception, this means intercept, record, monitor all communication of the whole country. So this is like a um, total different game, but I'm coming to other examples of what this means. So let us look for a moment at tactical instruments. <coughs> um, I just have here some like the rough scope of what we have now seen also in the spy files by WikiLeaks and others. Um, there's like low noise drilling machines, which I will come to in a second, lock picking tools, tactical inception devices, covered audio, video tracking, so that means location positioning systems, transmission recording devices, so on, vans, cars, motorcycles, and so on. <clears throat> so um, what the hell is a low noise drilling machine doing here? This machine is a tactical instrument to drill holes in walls very silent, very slow, um, and um, you get this in a suitcase, you open the suitcase, you put it next to your wall, it drills a noise, a very low noise hole in it, and then you can, it stops automatically before the wallpaper at the other side of the wall, and you can put a fiber optic instrument through this or an electronic box, so this is used to uh, intercept noise from the door next to you, from the room next to you. Um, <clears throat> here is the optical microphone used for this. This can be used, as you see, up to one kilometer. So the beauty of using an optical microphone is you can't detect it with anything searching for electronics. So this can be used to be uh, brought into a building through the sanitary installations, meaning the toilets, and um, it just gets a little bit over the water surface and you can search the whole building for electronics and nothing is there, just a kilometer away someone is intercepting you by the small membrane vibrating and there's through a laser beam going through the optical cable and watching the vibration of this membrane. Um, <clears throat> other interesting tactical instruments is for example a government key copying system where Finally, we know why they need CCTV everywhere. This is a machinery capable of copying keys just from an image from a key. So whenever you enter a room where the camera is in place and you put your key collection on a table to maybe do something, whatever, uh, this is enough to copy your keys and then enter your home. How nice. Um, <clears throat> other um, tactical instruments are you know, this, you can guess, is something sending something. I just found the name so nice, the informant. So this is also, by the way, um, often in criminal investigations the case that sometimes a witness appears or is mentioned to have brought some kind of information where this witness does not exist as a natural person. It's technical means, but they are not disclosing the fact that technical means have been used. So they call it informant so-and-so, um, 
was bringing in some information. Um, this is also a technical instrument, a very nice one, so to say. Um, this is a yeah, body-worn array microphone, as you can read. Uh, it's a kind of a jacket with 24 microphones built in, so this guy can sit with this type of jacket at the other side of a restaurant, turning his back to you. They record 24 channels simultaneously, digitally, and then afterwards can browse through the room who was speaking in which corner about what, um, by just um, separating the channels, uh, the signals, and the stuff coming from it. <clears throat> so you get a roughly idea. And also, it's very obviously, if you look at this type of um, presentation, the interrogation room kit. No, it didn't say torture, it just said cover camera, um, making video footage or creating video footage of an interrogation. This obviously does not sound exactly like what we're used in democratic states to have an interrogation with a hidden camera. So it's quite obvious to whom this technology is maybe in this case market. Um, to get you the other side, what we talk, when we talk about strategic instruments, as I said, the um, so-called strategic telecommunication interception, also marked as so-called massive interception, that's the term the French company Amesis, for example, used, means the total recording and storage of all telecommunication of a country, also stuff like infection proxies, which come out a little later, and the whole set of monitoring, intelligence, analytics platforms with speech recognition, profiling, pattern recognition, and so on. So um, if you look, this is um, a part of um, a marketing uh, presentation from a South African company called Fastec. Um, and they say, like, the new approach is not you target someone or some people and you intercept them. You just capture all. You have an intermediate storage, you filter, and then you end up at a long-term storage. This has to do with bandwidth reasons. It doesn't mean they lose any calls in the long-term storage. It just means they reduce it to a bandwidth which is more cheaper to store. And so you can uh, later add new targets. You say, well, someone I didn't um, care about the last three years now has become a prime suspect in whatever, doing political protest organization or whatever. And now we want to grab his uh, phone calls and the information whom he was calling to and who was in contact with the last three years. And then you just add this as a new target and get it from the long-term storage. So um, I made um, a small sample calculation just to get over this little skeptical point in every one of us, wait a second, you're talking about recording the whole telecommunication of the whole country over years. Yes, this is what we're talking about. Um, the German regulatory authority also for telecommunication has published this statistic for 2010, quite some months ago. Um, that was 196.4 billion minutes of plain simple telephone network calls. So that includes ISDN in this case. Um, they have said it was 101 billion minutes of GSM. It was a data volume of 65 million gigabyte and a data volume of 3.2 billion gigabyte in broadband networks. Um, <clears throat> so if we look at the presentation of the total storage solution system, um, here is like the summary of which codecs to use, so which bitrate samples to use, and what they say is that 8 kilobit per second is providing acceptable quality for most intelligence applications, that means speaker recognition, um, so identifying who was speaking, what he was speaking, and getting also what they call um, the, the breeze rhythm. So if someone is excited, you can read his emotional pattern, so his, invo his emotional involvement from just the breathing frequency while he speaks. So if, it, if he really doesn't care about what he's saying or if he's personally like touched or involved or something. Um, so when you uh, make this calculation uh, with a 196.4 billion minutes in the uh, landline, phone network of Germany for 2010, you make it with 8 kilobit per second, you end up with um, doo -doo 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 -doo, um, 11.784 terabyte, 
And then if we add some overhead, like call parameters, who was calling whom at what time, and synchronization, and so on, um, that's roughly 15 terabytes. So what does this cost us? If you just Google on the internet what cost me a petabyte storage, this is like the newest shit out there. Uh, ZFS file system, uh, all included, 42 UREC, you get it for $495,000, and you might get a discount if you buy a little more. So let's take these figures. Um, if we want 15 petabyte, we take 380,000 euro roughly per petabyte. That means we're talking 5.7 million euro. What is that compared to the budget of Bundesnachrichtendienst of foreign intelligence or to the military? That's like nothing. And even if you say, okay, you need some money for installation, for the personnel, for the energy, maybe for the bribery to get the access to the fiber optics and so on. Um, if you're not the government, but if you're a private mafia organization, then you end up maybe with 20, 30 million euros. So that's totally affordable. If you compare it to government buildings or aircraft carriers or weapons or what, what other toys governments buy, that's quite doable. Um, in private enterprise point of view, okay, that's subject to return of invest calculation. So if you're bugging a country due to interest in their oil industry or whatever in specific contracts, dealings, tenders, that might make sense as well. Um, so <clears throat> it's being done. Uh, it's probably done in many also European countries for quite some time now. Um, you might want to have a look at the companies providing this. There's all their technical specifications out there. Uh, we haven't um, gotten their financial figures yet, so how many installations they sold. We know some of them, but you might want to analyze this for your own country. Um, another interesting strategic approach is uh, a quite, um, I, say, I would say, new one. It's called infection proxies. Uh, that's uh, part of this Finn Fischer thing. Uh, Finn Fischer um, is uh, like a whole family of products um, provided by Gamma and Elaman, two companies who are marketing front end for a lot of products from other companies. Um, the specific component infection proxy, which in their language is called FinFly ISP, you will find in the WikiLeaks release also the advertisement video that explains this on a dummy level, um, is a tool to, um, which is here roughly explained. So what you can do is you can either put it to your, on the, on the tactical side, you can put it inside an ISP to specific targets. So you can say you just want a few people. Or on the strategic level, you put it where your ISP is connected to other countries. Uh, this is the way it was done, obviously, in Oman and possibly in Turkmenistan, where the government had the idea that they wanted to infect, so meaning install Trojans to all computers that have connections with non-national uh, other networks and use systems like Skype or whatever. Um, so this is large-scale and scalable um, Trojan Horus installation, so to say. Um, while Elaman and Gamma um, are more or less well-known companies, uh, with Elaman is a German-Swiss company, Gamma is a German, British, and also Lebanese, and they have at least an office there company. Dreamlab uh, so far was not known to be involved in this. They are uh, more or less um, security expert hacker style run company in Switzerland, which were known to be involved in lawful interception. That's the normal uh, stuff that ISBs and telcos need to provide to governments to allow tapping on request. Um, but there's a whole bunch of other, um, yeah, companies connected to this game. And DreamLab seems to be involved in the um, development of this, which brings, me, which brings me to an important issue, and that's the complexity of the company structures if, and that's what I'm trying to do with this wiki, analyze uh, how they are connected together. So a journalist a friend of mine, who will hopefully forgive me that I disclosed this here, but it will not be in the presentation I'm handing out, try to get an idea about the three like main persons that's um, 
Lucen Alexander Nielsen, Holger Rumscheid, the guy called Eugen Fussel, which companies uh, they are involved into and who is connected in which way. Uh, from an analyst notebook point of view, that's like intelligence software that's used by the police and by investigators to try to find um, connections between companies and people. It looks roughly like this. Um, <clears throat> what we can, um, I will explain it a little bit more in detail, the results, but the, the complexity comes from different um, games these companies play. For example, Gamma is a company that exists as Gamma International Deutsche, as an international GmbH registered in Germany. It registered also as Gamma International in the UK. So the same company name in two different countries. And what has happened is when the first journalist reported that Gamma International uh, GmbH, so the German one, was involved in this and that, they got sued. The company said, no, we didn't do that which is technically correct, because one of their seven other companies, or however it ever are, uh, that is named Gamma International has done this. So they are playing shadow games with putting the same company name in different countries. Um, also, what we are seeing is shareholders of companies are sometimes cross-connected in separate uh, jurisdictions. So what we uh, saw, for example, is that Elamann is a German registered company, it's also a Swiss registered company. In the Swiss registered company, we have the main shareholder from Gamma also being one of the shareholders there. But again, you need to be very careful if you publicly, as a journalist or whatever, write about this to, to keep this legal uh, fine structure clear. Um, what is a big problem is, of course, if, for example, in the case of Trovicor, Trovicor is the former uh, a part of what once was a Siemens department called voice and data recording. That got sold to Siemens Nokia Networks um, and then got again separated because uh, Siemens sold this lawful and deception stuff to Iran. The Iranian government used it to identify people from protest, get them from the street tortured, imprisoned and so on. Um, so what they did was saying, okay, Siemens made a public statement that they don't want to be involved in this um, technology anymore because it brings reputation issues and so on. So they put it in a company called Trovicor. Trovicor is owned by a private equity fund. It's called Perusa. Perusa is a German, uh, has a German uh, administration office in Munich, uh, but it's registered in Jersey, um, in Jersey somewhere that is a um, British crown um, private uh, ownership, it's not British, uh, not, not United Kingdom. Um, and it's um, hard, if not impossible, to find out who really owns um, Trovicor, which is uh, many journals uh, are following this at the moment. Um, what we often see in this um, uh, yeah, industry is that there's separate companies for development and for marketing. So some of these uh, marketing companies like Elaman and Gamma, they have huge catalogs. You will see the Elaman catalogs in the spy files, or you maybe have seen it. It's like hundreds of pages of tactical, strategic, all kinds of instruments. But um, it doesn't mean that they all produce it, if they produce anything at all. Maybe they just produce catalogs. And all these small companies um, producing the real technology are a bit more hard to find. And in the case of Finn Fischer, it was more or less, uh, uh, yeah, it was work of German television to find out at all who was developing it. Um, <clears throat> so again, an example, uh, William Lusenusen, interestingly, a guy having most of the names his son has as well, but his son is called uh, Lusen, um, no, he's called Nielsen, uh, Lusen Alexander Nielsen. Um, so this guy is about, 80 years old now. He is like only the father of the main player. Um, but uh, this is his appointments in different companies. And what we see here is Gamma TSE Limited, Gamma 2000 Waste Management Limited, where you're thinking, wait a second, what are these guys doing? Are they running maybe the recycle bin in my Windows computer? Or are they maybe uh, providing a uh, paper trash service for governments, which happens also in Germany, that the intelligence, um, if they are interested in someone, 
they replaced the normal paper recycling car coming and collecting your paper trash with a government one which looks the same. They will take all your trash separately and will scan it in and look on what they can learn from you. This happens. Uh, but there's also companies like G G2 Systems Limited, Gamma Tsu Unlimited, Gamma International Limited, and Finn Fisher Limited. So clearly uh, a nice collection of company positions. Um, so this again is what, what I'm trying to do in the wiki to get really who is connected in which way, and that is um, yeah, not the most easy thing. Um, there is um, some policy issues um, which uh, become important because at the end of the day we're not talking about companies as abstract things, we're talking about people, uh, persons, human beings involved in actings and they use these complex uh, instruments of different companies to hide also. Um, so there is people who are clear-cut involved. There's like CEOs, shareholders, registered signing rights people, so what is in Germany a Prokurist, whatever. Um, then there's people who have at least missing deniability of being involved, like um, involved in marketing, uh, appearing on the ISS conference, that's this intelligent support systems conferences, uh, doing promotions and so on. And then there is those behind the scenes, the developers, the exploit researchers, the security experts who provide the knowledge to develop these tools. And um, well, here we come right where we are here um, because the hacker scene has become a very important area for these people as information can be gathered very effectively from the computers, from the telephones, from the PDAs and so on of the people out there. Um, so the hacker scene has become a key area of phishing for information uh, through hired spies, as I would call it, so people in the scene who work as consultants or whatever to these type of companies to keep updated on technical trends. We have, of course, seen them here in the Congress for many years uh, to identify and hire those who are likely to accept specific offers. So this is about analyzing persons who maybe don't have so strong political opinions, but to have great technical knowledge and maybe need a job and so on. And um, activities to uh, do get uh, this approach, who, who follow this approach, is, includes, but it's not limited to sponsoring conferences, parties around conferences, um, including free drinks, generous service, so maybe you have also seen some conferences which were sponsored and you didn't have to pay something and all the food was nice and you found very interesting people to talk to. And um, some of these companies also simulate hacker culture, you know, they, they study here at the Congress what, you know, that it needs to be Club Mate offered and not Coke and they all don't wear tires because that would bring away the hackers, they just dress casual and, and then young people come with technical knowledge and think, oh, this must be a hacker company, right? So this must be nice people and here you are. Um, so, and there is a hidden agenda and these operations, these companies run, go up to the level of information warfare. So, examples. Um, I talked about DreamLab a little bit. You can, this is just a small except from the wiki about the involvement of this company. Um, so with this thing with Oman and Turkmenistan and the involvement in FinFly SP, so the infection proxy. <laughs> and then you have conferences uh, which are regularly taking place in Switzerland called the ZeroSec, organized by DreamLab. And you know, it's all, all nice there, free drinks, Buffet, nice food, hacker uh, events, people who are also speaking at CCC conferences, speaking there, maybe knowing, maybe not knowing what they're doing there. And so bringing the taste of the hacker community to a company that from my point of view is engaged in very pure evil. Um, <clears throat> also on the ISS, which is a clear conference for this market, um, just recently, this year is December 2011, 7th, so that is like 20 days ago, we had in the track for law enforcement, interior security and the intelligence community, this, so this is the closed track of that 
conference, which is only for the governmental people. We have uh, Karsten Noll from the Security Research Labs in Berlin talking about GSM and GPRS defense trends. Oh, how nice. And he will speak just about 30 minutes from now on in room number one upstairs about defending mobile phones. So here's my question. Yeah, is the enemy line here? Is this the enemy line that we are talking about with this 28C3 with this behind enemy line? Maybe it's right there. So. Um, I mean, what I can just say, if you're behind these enemy lines, get the fuck out of there and um, please bring some data with you um, <laughs> as uh, we want. Uh, <clears throat> so, as um, you will see, there is quite a collection already, but we need more. We need evidence. We need more of those companies we are not aware about who are involved in development and so on. So feel free to contribute. Um, the whole idea is this, is to get like more people involved decentrally to look what are the companies, maybe visit them also, let them know that we have an eye on them, identify the people working there, might make nice pictures, uh, ask them about if they feel something for privacy, if it comes maybe to their own privacy, so um, trigger them. Let's find out um, how they feel about this. Um, I think it's very fair to address the people involved in this kind of stuff. So look where they're traveling to, um, identify their, that's by the way what we have been doing for months now with a bunch of journalists, like trying to find out who's traveling where to, to find out where are the customers and where are possible people to talk to to get contracts and stuff. Of course, it's very important to identify the legal framework. We have been talking about um, the idea of banning um, surveillance technology the same way encryption technology is banned. Indeed, encryption technology so to protect from surveillance of telecommunication cannot be freely sold on this planet. There's the Vazenar conference and there's agreements because this is so-called dual use goods which can be used in a civil or in a military way. But if you're selling surveillance technology, interestingly, there's no export control. So you can sell whatever you like. Uh, there was a try from the Green European Party to get this restricted as well, but that was refused due to economic reasons. And um, this could have to do with the fact that some of the persons involved have at least previous governmental um, obligations. Maybe also some of these companies are not companies. Maybe this is just... Uh, private branches of intelligence agencies who try to get into other countries. And this is, of course, a very comfortable way to get hired for surveillance. And then you get the data and also a little bit of money and you know who's the guys running the shop and so on. So there is a lot more to be explored. Yeah, well, that was roughly it. I mean, I could um, now go into explaining, but I guess you can do that yourself. Um, what, what you will find in the wiki. So um, there's a categorization so that you can go category persons. You will see there's already some people in there, um, about 205 at the moment. So, and then if you look at people, you will see um, whatever we know about them, where they are born. The date of birth is always very important if you're researching people because you might find people with the same name and you need to distinguish them, uh, where they have been appeared, where they have previously been working and so on. So the idea is to um, yeah, make these people trackable and um, get the whole discussion also to a level where uh, you can look in a country, if you look at Syria for example, that you see, okay, who's the ISPs, who's in place, and which companies appeared we have uh, tracked down about um, five companies in Syria at the moment um, with different, um, with all the articles and so on. So to create, this is not an intelligence operation, this is pure public service um, for the public domain, so to be able to track down. And of course, all the companies then are here linked with the articles and you can get to the companies and where they are and which people are there. 
and what we know about them and what kind of information we have about them and so on. So what I'm trying very hard to do is to distinguish um, between what we really know about a company and what we maybe know but can prove because everything of this will be, if it comes heart to heart, subject to legal uh, battle. So the idea is to distinguish and put everything which we can prove for the, for the moment in a section called unconfirmed rumors to say, well, you know, we've heard this, we can't prove it, maybe it's true. Let's look for some evidence. Um, but don't pretend to know stuff that we don't know because that can be very dangerous. Um, I guess the day will come that these companies will, you know, send their army of lawyers and look what is bulletproof and what not. Um, well, that was roughly the presentation. Um, maybe there is some more questions now from the audience, or maybe someone has better ideas on what to do with the people involved. Or, yeah, okay, we got people with microphones coming right away. Thank you. Um, Um, just wanted to ask if you could put on the slide with your drop points again. Excuse uh, or, me? Or with your drop targets again. The slide. Uh, 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 which one? Yeah, this one. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Points of contact. Um, is it a full time job for you? <laughs> no. Next to that, I'm a little bit member of the board of the CCC and running a company and doing other stuff. Now, this is like my hobby, but I found it very satisfying because there's so much work to do and it's like you can put all your energy into such a wiki to, you know, collect the persons. I'm doing, I mean, most of the research and that what I would also, if, if you guys want to help support or just want to research yourself, use Tor, use anonymizers, don't leave too much traces about yourself. Um, take care of what's called operational security uh, because we're playing here with people who are um, experts in targeting and in collecting intelligence about people. Um, so there's a bit of security measures. Um, no, this is not a full-time job, but I do spend maybe some hours per day on playing around with this and putting some energy that just comes when I look at this shit. Um, <laughs> into something useful. <laughs> um, I think there's a very possible danger that the companies and people you're targeting might try to inject wrong or misleading data into your wiki. How do you, what do yeah, you think well, of that? The point is that this is not an open wiki at the moment. I just accept there's uh, some people helping with putting stuff in, but exactly because of this, uh, we are like, uh, it's not an open wiki um, because that might be a problem. I mean, next to backup and so on, uh, the information needs to be accurate and that's why we're collecting and uh, whatever we can confirm goes into the section of the page called unconfirmed rumors. Uh, but indeed, what you will find here is most of the stuff is quite public. What I have been doing there's like some great tools. If we, for example, look at this company who provided the Trojans for the German government, um, as public information, you can get their registered um, documents from the European, it's called, um, yeah, in this case, it's Elektronik Bundesanzeige, but it's the European um, company database for um, financial turnovers. It's a European law that all European companies need to put their financial turnovers into a database once a year so we can see how much money they make um, per year. There's also what is very nice, um, there's a European tender database where you can see uh, who has bought stuff because um, public, um, <coughs> if you see here for example, this is, that's the customs police that they need to make a tender to buy surveillance systems. And so they need to put a rough description of what they have done and who has got the job and what was the total amount of it. This is a two million installation 
for German customers going to the company Digitask. Um, the tet.europe.eu um, is, by the way, available in all languages that um, uh, in Europe are, uh, what do you call it, in the European member states are there. Trouble is, um, you will only find the full document with all the specifications in the national language of those entity who were submitting the documents. They most of the time only give a very rough translation uh, where many facts are missing. But still, you can look uh, for uh, keywords. And for example, <coughs> um, we found with the keyword IMSI catcher, we found um, <coughs> here um, IMSI catcher um, procurements of the, in this case, Bavarian police, which we had indeed not been known about. So this is 3G. Uh, units, so two units of 3G MZ catchers for about uh, 400,000 euro. Hey, that's quite cheap, by the way. Um, so, uh, with the right keywords, tet.europe.eu is a very nice toy. Um, you just need to look, so you can either look for the companies, uh, which is sometimes hard work, or you can look for the keywords. So we have uh, identified uh, quite some uh, business activity with this toy. And this is, I mean, that's the point, okay? The point is, this is public information. I don't disclose here any secrets or whatever. Um, I'm just, uh, we're just trying to collect and give it this as a place for re uh, journalists also, if they're researching company, to help them a little bit with um, collecting public information. And of course, I mean, if WikiLeaks like this here, in this case, they also brought from Copham, that's a British company providing MZ catches. If uh, material uh, brochures and so on um, <coughs> uh, ends up with WikiLeaks, that's of course helpful to put a link down because then it's like published already. Um, yeah, maybe some more. I see a hand there. You get a microphone? Oh. Actually, over here, um, oh, have, you, have, yeah. have you noticed any companies, uh, as they've been put under closer scrutiny, um, I guess, mm -hmm. how they reacted? And are you, do you have any measures or ideas about how to uh, deal with them adapting their corporate structures in a more complicated fashion to kind of obfuscate their relationships with these unsavorable entities? Um, well, in the case of um, Gamma, um, it all started with this uh, raid um, of the Egyptian Ministry of State Security and we got the whole um, uh, company structure from Gamma and also the names of the people involved and so on and journalists were indeed uh, researching them. There is cases of um, criminal um, careers of at least one person involved for bribery, an African country which is also a very interesting field. Um, but indeed, um, when we came to the German company, um, German Gamma, we have a guy called um, Martin Münch, and people, people have identified his home address, and um, this is just like from some other web forums where these people have been discussed. And um, then journalists tried to reach this gentleman for a comment and so on. He refused. Um, his partner was... Um, talking with the journalists, but then refusing an interview. They sent them, um, they hired some lawyers, and the lawyers sent letters that if you will write anything about this company, we will, you know, whatever deal with you. Um, nothing has happened, but what we know is that these people have changed their living address. They moved somewhere else. Um, they became a little bit feeling unease of the public discussion of their private details. Uh, which I think is very fair if you look at well, what they have been um, doing as living with other peoples. Um, but um, yes, um, I think this um, is a way to make these people think about privacy and I don't see many other ways um, as they refuse to... <laughs> as they refuse to participate in the public dialogue. So well, that would be the alternative, maybe. So, but yes, this will be very interesting to see. But I mean, 
Gamma is already a company living in a very complex structure. If you try to find out where um, Luz and John Alexander lives, um, like in some of his companies, he's, uh, and for the German tax, he's living in the United Kingdom. In some of his British companies, then he's living in Lebanon. So I'm not sure if the German tax company or a tax office uh, will send someone to Lebanon. Of the British will do. It might be that there is some uh, tax reasons here for the complexity. Um, then actually we have his former uh, company he has been working for a very well-known German company called PK Electronics um, with lots of stuff. So um, Gamma is um, the uh, at least the most complex company structure I've seen so far, but it will be interesting to see on how they maybe will change to disappear again from the surface. Uh, that's a subject of the experience. Um, so let's see. But I mean, at the end of the day, these guys want to make business, okay? And so that's where we get them. They advertise, they are in contact, they use distributors, but still they want to make money. So and if they want to make money, they need to be um, findable somewhere. Um, <clears throat> have you ever uh, felt that these companies are trying to suppress you for not uh, doing your work, for not uh, opening this information? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I got your question right. You mean that they pressure me for not, yes. for not opening their information? To not get it right, you mean? or? to not um, collect this information oh. in, in this No, not yet, not yet. I guess, I guess they will, I will, uh, the day will come, I will get very interesting letters. I just got some emails, but they were so ridiculous uh, that I simply ignored them. Like, I don't want to be on your wiki. The company is dissolved, I'm no more doing this, but you know, <laughs> bring up some arguments. Um, so, um, by the way, um, this is also um, an interesting case, the gentleman. Um, the gentleman, um, Mr. Yule, who wrote me an interesting email the other day, uh, was in a company called GTS, which could be no more exist, looks like it. Um, there have been a German company distributing some very interesting technology. Uh, for example, they have been the exclusive distributor for Fastec and um, also for um, <coughs> um, the NetWitness, which is uh, censorship stuff. So, um, as I said, Fastec, uh, this company only has one product, that's strategic telecommunication interception. So it's very interesting uh, alone the fact that a German company is their distributor. It means there must be a customer. Otherwise, they wouldn't have a distributor, or at least someone trying to market their stuff. So, a fast tech is really worth studying. Um, and if uh, here's someone from South Africa, I would love to get more from their official records, tax payments, and so on. We need to know more about these guys here. Um, they uh, will teach us, or their records will teach us, in which countries we have these strategic telecommunications installations, uh, interception installations. Okay, we have one question from the Signal Angels. Yeah. Yeah. So the IRC is concerned about um, mm -hmm. your wiki in, and wants to know whether you run a mirror or a backup. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thought so. And uh, someone also was also curious whether you have a, like a list of the bad guys. Um, so where you where you list them so you don't have well, to Well, you go to any through. person and there's this thing called category persons and here you go. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Yeah, of course, I run daily backups and I mean, there's nothing secret in this wiki. Um, they can hack it, of course, um, can be deleted every day and so on. It's just a media wiki. But um, I'm keeping daily backup, so that should be okay to detect whatever has happened. 
Are there more questions? Here's one more. Excuse me? What was this tribe core company again? Tribe core? Trovicor. Trovicor. Sorry, it's um, Trovicor. Um, and they and you want to look at the their if you look at their ownership you need to look for that's somewhere here for Perusa <clears throat> yeah this one that's the private equity fund um, officially owning it with a Guernsey uh, registration or whatever doing all kinds of nice stuff with confirmed activities in Iran, Bahrain, and Syria. All very nice democratic countries respecting human rights, almost. Okay, so there seems no more questions. I would like you to thank him for this great talk. And have a nice evening. <laughs>